struck the palms and strode their garments on the ground. Hosanna, our glad voices raise, Hosanna to our King. Should we forget our Savior's praise, the stones themselves would sing. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, one, God, God one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, Father, all. The Lord be with you. And with thy Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, not to mind earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to cleave to those that shall abide through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture lessons. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. And I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the, fruit, the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. 
But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly, in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ.
Praise to the Lord, O oh, let all that is in me adore him. All that has life and breath come now with praises before him. Let the Amen sound from his people again. Please be seated. Good morning, friends. It's good to be with you. I bring greetings from the postulants and candidates of our diocese for holy orders who gathered last week for our yearly retreat. I want to begin by acknowledging the ground upon which we stand, upon which this church is built the land of the Miami, the Peoria, and Potawatomi, the first peoples of this land. Acknowledgement is one way to begin to repair the breach with our indigenous siblings due to the actions of our forebears. I also want to acknowledge the privilege I have because of my gender and the color of my skin. I acknowledge my complicity in the sin of racism and I'm seeking ways to repair the wounds caused by white supremacy among my siblings of color. Lastly, I want to acknowledge our shared grief and lament that we've all experienced as a result of living through the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you for your steadfast and kind and attentive way of living into this time. Would you please join me in giving thanks for your priest in charge uh, Mother Michelle, can you give thanks to God for her? Are there persons serving on the vestry, wardens, vestry members present? Are you here today? Could you stand and we can acknowledge you as well? Thank you very much for your service and leadership. You. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. One of the daily experiences that I have, and it's also an experience often that, that Canon Mother Michelle has, is parking in the north parking lot of the cathedral, Monday through Friday. It's not unusual to arrive, regardless of the season, to find a woman sleeping outside with several, several bags, sometimes several suitcases waiting for St. Margaret's house to open. St. Margaret's house is a woman's day shelter that was established 30 plus, 31 years ago by several very important and influential women in the Diocese of Northern Indiana. And it's served the women of South Bend and Mishawaka for 31 years. It's also probably not surprising to any of you to understand that the significant number of women who are served are women of color. And most of them walk to St. Margaret's house. Some have cars, but most of them walk. St. Margaret's house provides them with food, with an opportunity to shower, with an opportunity to get some clean clothes or to wash their clothes. It's also important to say to you that some of the, some of the guests of St. Margaret's House are people who struggle with mental illness. 
Some of them struggle with addiction. And St. Margaret's house has been present in th these women's lives for 31 years. It is a reminder of the important ministry that Jesus called his disciples to today. A few weeks ago, I was getting out of my car and walking to the cathedral offices, and I, on Thursdays, uh, every, every week, I wear a black clergy shirt because uh, there's an international movement that invites persons throughout the world to wear black on Thursdays to call attention to the abuse of women in the world. And so on Thursdays, I wear a black clergy shirt, and I'm often mistaken for one of the priests at the cathedral. No one ever stops me with my purple shirt on. <laughs> but they do stop me with my black shirt on. And that afternoon, a woman came up to me, and she said, are you the priest here? And I said, uh, yes. And she said, well, I, I'm looking for Father Brian. And I said, well, he's not here right now. And she said, well, I'm going to be evicted. And I said, well, what's the situation? She said, well, um, I, I'm back, back due on my rent. I pay weekly, and I, I need to get my security deposit, and I, I don't have any money. And I said, well, how much does it cost? And she said, well, it's $85 a week. And I said, okay. I, so I brought her into the cathedral, and I said, hold on for just a minute. So I went upstairs, got the bishop's discretionary fund, and I wrote a check for $400. And I said, let's go across the street to see if we can get this cashed. And, and she said, I don't think they're going to cash it. I said, well, let's just go see. So I spent the next hour trying to get that check cashed so she wouldn't be evicted. I was traveling west that evening, and I stopped at the Key Bank on Western Avenue and said, she may be coming here, and if she does, here's my card. It's legitimate. I've, I've written this check for her. I went back the next morning to check in, and she was sitting on the stoop right outside the cathedral entrance. And she said, Bishop Sparks, they locked me out of my house. I said, what? She said, they locked me out of my house. So I said, let's get in the car. So she got in the car and we drove out to her house. And sure enough, the place was locked. I could tell there were people inside, but they weren't, they weren't letting us in. I share that story with you because at least, at least in my life, it's often easy to forget what I'm called to do. Jesus is walking and teaching his disciples in the Gospel of Mark today, and he says to them again, I want you to understand what's going to happen to me so that you know that when it happens, I'll have told you about it. And in fact, we're reminded that this is the second time of three times in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, chapter 9, and chapter 10, Jesus says, I'm going to be betrayed, handed over, killed, and I will be raised up. And they, they want nothing of it. And in fact, they're arguing about who's the greatest. Who's the most important? And Jesus says, if you want to be the greatest, you'll be the least. You'll associate yourself with the last, the lost, and the least. And if you want to be great, you'll be other people's servant. So sisters and brothers, the question before us is how is your life a manifestation of that kind of call to, to service and being a servant? We often 
like to associate ourselves with the rich and famous, the important people. But Jesus says, if you're going to be a follower of mine, it can't be that way with you. I, I remember the stained glass windows here of the four evangelists. And uh, some of you, I don't think we have it here, um, some, some stained glass windows off also, oh, yes, they're, they're right below there. So, so the four images of the Gospels are also in those windows. The image in Mark's Gospel is what? Does anyone remember? Mark's image is the lion. Mark's image is the lion roaring. The shortest gospel, Jesus comes across always as being someone challenging the status quo. And let's make no mistake, what Jesus says is going to happen does happen. He is handed over. He is killed by those in the political and religious establishment of Jerusalem. And he's, he's crucified. And he's raised up. And he calls all of us, just as he did his disciples, to take our place with him. This morning we have the privilege of, I have the privilege of confirming and receiving two of your uh, parishioners here. And before I do that, we'll all be invited to renew the promises made at our baptism, which we call the baptismal covenant. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Those are just a few of the questions will be asked. And our response is, I will with God's help. My friends, it's by God's grace that we are able to be followers of Jesus. It's by God's grace that we're able to be servants of others after the manner of Jesus, the servant of all. So as we continue our prayer, I'd like to invite you this coming week to think about or pay attention to persons that you often don't notice, people who perhaps are kind of invisible, maybe like the woman that I helped with her rent. I'm sure there are people here in Laporte or in other places that you live who are often invisible. Take a look at them. Stop and ask, how might I be a servant to those people? How might I give my life over in, in, in caring for and loving and serving them, the last, the lost, and the least? Let us pray. God who draws near, who comes to our level, whose nature is revealed in lordship laid aside. Give us grace to welcome you in the one who tests the bounds of our community, in the child, in the outcast, the one who comes with no power, save that of remaking our heart through Jesus Christ, the one who will be betrayed and in whose name we pray, now and forever. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too.
the staff and stand on my left next to me. The candidates will now be presented. I present John Gowans to the proclamation. I present Tom Brown to be received into this communion. John, Tom, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. do. Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. I do. And with, with God's, God's grace, I will, will follow him as my Savior and Lord. Lord. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship? in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, I will with God's help. Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Jesus Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. Open thy mouth to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service that you set before them, 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant John, with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. 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 I'll take your hands, Tom. Tom. We recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into this fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these, your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them, and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. and anniversaries now and then the peace Go ahead. Okay. the peace of the Lord be always with you and with thy spirit Christ peace be with you my friends blessings to you Christ peace be with you blessings to you Bless this water as we remember our baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you want, do you want the water? No, I don't do that. Okay. Please be seated for a couple of announcements. First of all, thank you to Bishop Doug for being with us this morning. It's always a joy to have you. And as the priest here who gets to preach every Sunday, it's an extra joy to listen to a sermon versus write one. So uh, I have extra special appreciation. And we're so thankful to receive and confirm officially Mr. John Gowans, Mr. Tom Brown. They've been with us for a long time, but now they're officially ours. We've written them in the book and they can't get away. There's no getting away. You know that, right? Thank you. Um, just a quick couple announcements. First of all, um, the offering today, the open plate offering will be contributed to the Bishop's discretionary fund. So if you would like to uh, place an offering in there and you don't get up here before we bring it up, you may leave it also after the service. Uh, do we have an extra an offering plate? Um, Yes, Tom Floyd, would you bring one from the back so that we can leave one up here in case you'd like to leave an offering for that. We're thankful for the many ways that the Bishop's Discretionary Fund helps people, including hopefully the woman that um, you were trying to help. You kind of left us dangling for that, so you'll have to tell us the rest of that story downstairs, please, sir. 
Um, secondly, I want to make sure that the vestry remembers uh, that next Sunday at 11 a.m. we're having our September vestry meeting. It's a new time for us, so please mark that on your calendar if you haven't already. I want to say a huge thank you to our celebration Sunday last week. It was a joyous um, bringing together of new faces and, and faces we haven't seen in a while, and then all of y'all's lovely faces as well. So it was, it was a wonderful gathering. Thank you to Jean Burns for being the key organizer for that. So thank you, Jean. And then thank you to Susie Richter, who coordinated our Sunflower Fest presentation, well, uh, presents. She called it a respite, and it really was because sitting underneath that tree in the shade with a breeze was delightful. I did not leave that space all day, although I heard that if you walked out on the asphalt, it was really hot. <laughs> and I would say um, a special thank you to Greg Harold, who showed up early and stayed all day and actually gave church tours for us. Um, Greg's not with us this morning, but gave church tours for us all day long. There were probably 50 or 60 people that graced our doors and came in to see the church, uh, to see the windows. I had several of those people say to me, it's a holy place. And I thought to myself and I said to them, yes, it is. And of course we gave them our invitation cards and we welcomed them to service. And there were even a handful of people that were looking for a church. So if you would just include in your prayers, those people that walk through our doors, whatever need they may have had, um, that they will find God and they will find a spiritual home. And then the last thing is, please come downstairs after church today if you have a little bit of time. We have some delicious casseroles and muffins down there and the bishop's going to join us for a short bit. Um, and we'd love to sit around and break bread with you and just chat informally. Anything else, sir? Anything else, Jean?
we should all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, in whom we are built up as living stones of a holy temple, that we might offer before thee a sacrifice of praise and prayer, which is holy and pleasing in thy sight. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we, and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, 
and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore the grace of Lord, so we we'll eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and enter into his blood, that we may have the more dwell in him.
of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of